Hello and welcome to a special bat edition of Diecast Restos featuring a Corgi Batmobile. It's not just any Batmobile, but my father-in-law Phil's Batmobile from his youth. He's asked me to give it an overhaul. It's an example of one of the earliest Batmobiles with these gloss black models only being preceded by the matte black car. Phil's model had a few issues, namely a chain cutter that wouldn't retract, a smashed windshield missing its beacon, a snapped aerial, naturally missing missiles, and a vacant seat where Robins should be sat. The tyres were also at the end of their lives, disintegrating at the slightest touch. So I shall be replacing all of these parts and I'll leave links in the description as to where I sourced everything. Hopefully this will be a helpful guide for anyone wanting to tackle one of these Batmobiles for themselves. So using my hyperspeed battery bat drill, I need to remove the burr on six reprehensible rivets. I centre punched each first to guide my drill bit. But let's take it apart and see what we've got, aside from a mess from those troublesome tyres. The base is fairly simple, essentially just holding everything together. The front left suspension arm has broken off the interior piece, but luckily the remnants are still held within, so I can make an effective repair rather than replacing the entire interior. I feel like I'll be turning to my trusty sidekick Gorilla Glue for this caper. Here's the front axle, unique to the rear on this earlier example, and you'll see why shortly. One rim has already lost the entirety of its tyre. Batmobiles with these wheels are referred to by collectors as red hubs. This is the afterburner piece. The outer housing is a gold painted cast metal piece, and the flame is plastic with a hole three quarters of the way along it. This hole moves with a nub on the rear axle to allow the flame to pop in and out with the turning of the wheels. That's why on this version the axles are not interchangeable. Here's the chain cutter and importantly the spring. And these next few pieces are the three components that allow the chain cutter to be activated at the push of the hood mounted button. This is quite an intricate system so you need to be sure you have all of the parts. Next out is the caped crusader himself. It's been a while since he's fought crime. Then I've got the steering wheel, another broken piece of suspension, and the chrome plated dashboard. Holy rivet removal Batman. Three more inner rivets need drilling to get this piece out. It's a very important cast metal part, supporting the cockpit and housing mechanisms. The thin metal springs control the missiles using this wheel. Inside you can see the bat phone still in situ. Underneath is the missile launcher, complete with one of Phil's original missiles because it is firmly stuck inside. A jab with a screwdriver soon sorts that out. Here is the broken plastic antenna piece, and here are the remnants of a very broken windshield. Let's have a look at the body without all of the bat tools clogging it up. It's complete, but one of the tail fins is slightly crooked. The last of the tyres is removed from the hubs with complete ease. So now we can look at all of the old parts together one last time. To me, this looks more daunting than the job really is. But now, finally, the dynamic duo are back together with a reproduced Robin. Here's a comparison of the windshields. Quite a lot is missing off of the original piece. Like I said before, I'll leave links to part sources in the description below. The Batmobile has a new beacon again, and a new antenna too which sits nicely between the beacon. Here are old versus new tyres, the new ones look great. And in goes the reproduction aerial for a test fit. I picked up some repro missiles too, again just checking they're sized up for the job in hand, before I moved on to the fun task of drilling out each of the rivet posts with a 1.5mm drill bit. Each is lubricated off camera with brake fluid, before I thread the posts with an M2 screw tap. I dematerialised the paint with some no nonsense bat paint remover fluid. No caustic soda today since I don't have a receptacle large enough for the beastly Batmobile. With the Batman TV series starring Adam West as the titular character first hitting screens in January 1966, Corgi wasted no time in getting their Batmobile to market. 
It went on sale in the same guise as Phil's in matte black in October 1966. Soon after, the paint changed to gloss. By November of 1967, Corgi were in need of modifying the model. The release of the number 107 Bat Boat, which sat upon a trailer, meant that the Bat Wheels needed bringing back to reality with a tow hook. How else would the Caped Crusader transport his watercraft around? A black plastic tow hook was hastily added. That pushed over the exhaust before a more permanent solution was found. The afterburner then had a towing hook extension cast onto its metal frame. In 1973, the hub's entire approach to the wheels was dropped in favour of Corgi's whiz wheels. The addition saw another modification to the rear, with the afterburner flame becoming static, no longer popping in and out. By 1976, the eight-spoke whiz wheels had been replaced by 12-spoke ones, and the base had a raised inscription reading Batman and National Periodicals Publications Incorporated. A wide-wheeled version was produced all the way through until 1983, by which time just fewer than 5 million Batmobiles had been made. Now with all that paint vaporised, I think it's time to straighten its wings. Well, that kind of had to be done during what could be the most violent part of this video. It's slowly getting straighter, but after much hammering and patience, it's finally looking as it should. Now let's polish it and appreciate its details. The real 1966 Batmobile was commissioned to customise a George Barris in late 1965, after Dean Jeffries wasn't able to deliver his 59 Cadillac based design in time for Batman going to air in January 1966. He used a one-off Lincoln prototype called the Futura from 1955 as his base. The body had been hand-built by Gear in Turin for a cost of 250,000 US dollars, more than 2.8 million today. Barris had purchased the Futura from Ford for a nominal sum of $1, and it sat in his workshop for several years. However, with the star car required within three weeks, Barris decided to transform the Futura into the Batmobile. It took Barris three weeks and cost $30,000 to modify the Futura, which he kept ownership of and leased to 20th Century Fox and Greenway Productions. During filming, several issues arose with the car, which was overheating, repeatedly having tyre failures, and the battery died. The engine and transmission were changed to those from a Ford Galaxy midway through the first season. After filming ended in 1968, Barris kept the car in his ownership. He sold it at auction in 2013 for $4.2 million. Anyway, how good does this cast Batman look on the base? Right, let's get on with the restorations, first by using my paint pens to return some colour to the hubs. You may think this is quite a simplistic approach, but in fairness, come the end of the video, you'll see it works. The bat symbols get a hint of orange. I fetch my non-dremel rotary bat tool and use it with some polishing compound to restore this metal piece. The original Batman TV series was originally broadcast over three seasons between 1966 and 1968. 120 episodes aired, initially twice weekly for seasons one and two, then weekly for the third. I used to watch repeats on TV growing up in the 90s, and it was one of my favourite things to watch. Its humour, upbeat music, bright colours, camp aesthetic, and in-your-face simple morality all appealed. There's nothing I remember better than Batman rescuing a hogtied Robin by throwing his bat rope and Robin gripping it with his teeth, being pulled to safety, then followed by a short dialogue about Robin owing his life to good dental hygiene. Brilliant. I've just used Gorilla Glue to repair the suspension portion of the plastic interior piece, as well as the connecting part for the underside of the bat phone. Also, after polishing failed to work out for me, I coated the exposed part of the cast metal missile piece in chrome before coating the missile barrels themselves. Now though, I've begun priming the two main cast metal parts, starting with the Batmobile body before moving on to the base. I 
I leave both of these parts to dry for a while prior to giving them their first coat. So I move on to refreshing the gold parts. I didn't prime these, but opted to lightly restore them with just a single coat of metallic gold. The missile controls, chain cutter control and afterburner all received gold, while the steering wheel had a blast of aluminium. Instead of a full gloss black, I decided to go with Tamiya TS29 semi gloss black. I felt like this would best suit this model, but if you're going to attempt your own after watching this video, go with whichever paint you feel best fits your needs. While wet, it looks very glossy, but you'll soon see its true finish. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to clear coat over the semi gloss for the entire model, so after the second coat of paint had dried, I tried applying high coat clear lacquer over it. But on review, the finish ain't great. So I chose not to clear coat the body section and instead go ahead with finalizing the restoration phase by applying several layers of Artistro 0.7 mm yellow paint for the headlights. And the final thing to do prior to reassembly is apply the bat symbol sticker to each side. Again, a link to the sticker source will be in the video description. Now here's the biggest parts selection I've ever had to deal with on this channel. There are so many separate pieces that make up the Batmobile. Okay, so step one, insert the chain cutter push button at this angle. Two, loosely fit the spring like so. Push it down into the cast slot and grab the hooked cross piece. Slot the end with the hole over the button and hook over the end of the spring. Then test to make sure the spring works effectively. I already had the beacon push fit onto the transparency, so add that and push fit the antenna. Then align the cast metal divider and again push fit. You'll note I already popped in the bat phone too. Back to the underside of the body, pop in the rear aerial. These can be quite loose, so make sure it's a good fit. After that, slot in the missile barrels like so, and then drop in the control wheel. Positioning isn't important here. Now collect the windshield assembly you made earlier and align it with the rivet posts. If it's anything like mine, it will clip over these, but do use glue if you see fit. I've loosely pushed the steering wheel onto the underside of the dash and am now guiding it into position. Next, it's finally time to reunite the Caped Crusader and Boy Wonder, but at this stage, it's only crucial that you sit Batman in his seat. Robin can wait, he's the sidekick after all. Batman's legs will hold him in his seat while you flip the interior piece and align with the body. Now ensure your spring and cutter are aligned exactly as I'm showing here. It's important as you'll soon need to test the mechanism. Then add the front axle. The afterburner flame and housing can then be brought together so that you can simply slot them over the rear axle as I'm about to show you. The hole in the plastic piece should loosely slot over the bulge on the axle and the housing sits halfway across the inside and outside of the body. Make sure you fit the base exactly as shown in order to collect the chain cutter spring. Be sure to test your chain cutter mechanism before screwing or gluing your Batmobile back together. It's much easier to do now than having to undo loads of screws or worse glue. But if all seems to be working, go ahead and seal the deal. Note, I had to use washers on the two central rivet post screws. Back to the beginning again with my father-in-law Phil's Batmobile, which he asked me to return to full working order. Robin had fledged, the beacon was bygone, the windshield shattered, it had a permanently poised chain cutter, no missiles to fire, and a slightly bent rear wing, not to mention its Cabri Flake tyres. So I sourced replacements for all of those parts, links in the description, and the end result is this. Holy transition Batman! Look at it now, in what I think is a really good looking shade of semi-gloss black. The gold accents of the beacon, chain cutter and controls pop against it. Robin has made a triumphant return in the cockpit, while the rear wing on this side has been straightened. The missile launcher has been restocked, there's a new aerial and another piece in gold as the afterburner looking excellent. 
So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial build of the Corgi 267 Batmobile. If you did, please leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more restorations and customs. Leave your thoughts in the comment section and if you would like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Thanks to my supporters and my thanks to you for watching. So be sure to tune in next week, same bat time, same bat place. Bye for now.